Um, so, this is our guest speaker, Frank. Now, I, I got to know Frank uh, when I was younger than you guys, which means that Frank was my age when I met him. Can you imagine that? And this is my grandma. This is how I got to choose Frank when I was young. And my grandmother probably is more aligned with Frank's worldview than I am. But at the end of the day, and I told him this, uh, at 3 p.m. today, there is a not small community of people who will get a warm meal and a lunch and toiletries and a place to hang out and what else? Shower. Shower. Uh, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, a drop-in center. Five days a week uh, uh, we're operating. Uh, and we serve a meal at 3 and uh, at 6. And now it's Saturday noon, noon to 2. So that's like 18 hours of street time on the first floor of our main house, the Bishop Dingman House. And we serve anywhere between 50 to 120 people. The days were open. Uh, and we give away food and toiletries. Uh, and we uh, shower in toilets. Uh, uh, and people can hang out. Uh, it's a, um, well, I call it a, uh, a poor people's country club. Uh, and it's because it's more than a, a feeding center. Uh, it's a hospitality house where we uh, where we do a unique thing uh, for the neighborhood uh, in the neighborhood. We live on the newer side, and you know. And I'm not telling you guys anything you don't already know instinctively. There are some places in town that are more dangerous than others. Uh, some more threatening than others. We live in one of those threatening areas uh, and the street life is predatory it, it always is you walk out on the street and you got to have your defenses up because someone's going to be looking at you thinking whatever it's just the way it is uh, i don't have to tell any woman this because uh, uh, they're they're the most vulnerable you unanimously through the human population but uh, when you're on the streets uh, and you're in a poor neighborhood and a mixed neighborhood uh, you walk and you're aware uh, that uh, it's a predatory scene. And what we do is uh, we bring in both the predators and the, pr the prey, and we say to both, none of that's happening here. Uh, we're going to offer you a place, and we're going to call you our guest. We're going to treat you like a guest. And you can expect from us host. We're going to serve you like a host. And, uh, and we're going to create human space. It's really the, uh, the everyday work that we do. And um, we've been doing this in the uh, near north side uh, for the last uh, 48 years, helped start the place. It, it, it's a uh, radical movement in the Catholic Church started by a woman, uh, a lay woman in the 1930s, uh, Dorothy Day. Look her up, she's really cool. Shelf for sainthood too, uh, and um, she, uh, yeah, and I, uh, I got involved with Dorothy Day uh, like in seminary. But before that, uh, I got involved with uh, the New Testament and Jesus. This is my, this is my, uh, I, you know, I'm going to persuasion speech here. I'm going to tell you about my conversion. And then I'm going to tell you about a way of looking at Jesus that is so radically different than most people that uh, I'm going to try to convince you that my way is more authentic and truer than most people's way. So that's that's what I'm up against here. And I'm uh, I begin by telling you that uh, I had a conversion experience. We're going to talk about Jesus. There's always a conversion experience. And it was in high uh, college, uh, and a wonderful uh, uh, experience uh, with the charismatic movement. In the seventies, there were no born again Catholics, uh, and that was uh, that was uh, uh, something that uh, was novel in the charismatic movement. And I got involved in it, and I got taken up. I had personal experience with Jesus. And I was told that the, I, I have to get myself acquainted with this, the Bible. Now, I went to 12 years of Catholic grade schools, high schools. I'm sure we had Bible studies. 
this is the first time I actually read it. And I read the New Testament. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I recommend if you are unfamiliar with the text, those are the books to go to. Uh, and I remember reading and going to the priest at UNI, guys I like and knew. I said, Father, what's going on? You know, I, I read this book, I don't think anybody's really following this. And he goes, yeah, that's a problem. Here, <laughs> yeah. uh, and it is. I mean, like, I mean, it says, uh, uh, you know, love your enemies was the first one. Like, well, nobody does that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, and uh, the last uh, fifty years, I would say, has been experience of of uh, confirming that, uh, that nobody really is reading this book and following it. At least as I understand. Uh, and. Uh, the way I, uh, I, I'd i like to introduce it to you, uh, how I'm going to explain it to you is uh, with the help of this, uh, this, uh, this graphic. This is a graphic of a duck. Can you see that? The duck? The duck? This is a duck. Okay. Okay, now, look at this. You see this? This graphic now is a rabbit. You see the rabbit? Okay. What I just did here with this, I'm going to try to explain how I understand what we're doing with the book. Because... Uh, the book was written when people saw it as a rabbit. And now we see it and we think it's a duck. Now, in the world of animals, the difference between a duck and a rabbit, not so much. You need a duck and an alligator. You know, I mean, uh, they're close. A lot of things you can say similar, but there are a lot of things different. And uh, this book was written at a time when uh, the world looked at it like a duck. And then within a few hundred years, everybody thought they were reading a book about a rabbit. Let me explain. The New Testament was written between 40, 50 AD and 120 AD. That's just, we learned that. that we have uh, science, uh, literature, uh, anthropology, all this stuff is adding to our knowledge to this book when it was written and who wrote it. So they wrote it between 50 and 120 AD. And uh, does anybody know what was going on in the Jewish Roman world at that time? Would well, help you understand the guy, whoever wrote it, what they're writing about. It was called the Jewish Roman Wars. Yeah, yeah. In the uh, and the New Testament was written during the Jewish Roman Wars, and uh, in seventy A.D the Romans destroyed Jerusalem. That was the second temple. The first temple was destroyed by the Babylonians. You may not be that familiar with Jewish history, but they destroyed Jerusalem. And they went on killing Jews all over the place till 120. And the people who wrote this book were writing from a Jewish perspective. <laughs> Their hero was a Jewish guy who died on a cross. You know, that's got to be a hard sell in the first century. <laughs> really? No kidding. And the reason it's a hard sell, it wasn't uncommon to see a Jew on a tree during this era. And the Jewish nation people were at war with the Romans and they were almost liquidated. Got it? 
And all of the New Testament was written during that time. And the main emphasis of the New Testament at that time was discipleship. Read this book if you're willing to follow the dead Jew on a tree to eternity. That's what that's the cell here. Right? Somewhere uh, after Constantine, easily the emperor of the 300s, somewhere be between the ending of the writing of the New Testament and Constantine, the main focus was not discipleship, 